All right, unsupervised vitality uh, tent uh, hammocking part two. So how to sleep comfortably. So check this out. Okay, so um, how do you sleep in your hammock comfortably? In Michigan in July or August, as long as you have the bug net, you probably just climb in that bad boy and go to sleep. But some of you are uh, dainty and uh, sleep cold, right? So I suggest you bring a whoopee, which is just a poncho liner. Get in there and cover up with it, or <laughs> this one's got holes in it. Grab a whoopee, or uh, I always have my patoo with me. This is made of wool. This is typically how I would end up doing it. Let's get that down here a little bit where I can reach it, right? Get that zipper staged. I get inside. I can tuck my hat up inside here, whatever. And then I'll leave the, the um, zipper open so you can see. But then I just would grab my patu, get that opened up, and just tuck it down. Tuck it down around your feet. Pull that up. And then as you get cold uh, through the night, if you get a little chill, you can just sort of pull it up and, and cover yourself. You're still gonna lose heat through the bottom of this because I basically have no insulation. But for me, wrapping up in the patu uh, is fine. I don't, don't normally need to cover that down to about, let's say 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Now here's another thing you can do because you have a little, um, little to no insulation under you. Sometimes I'm wearing my wool socks. I'll take my patu or my wooby and I'll wrap it around myself like this first just my upper body. Then I get down in my tent, my hammock, and I lay so that my upper body is wrapped up and I have some insulation under me. Since the patu is a, just a wool blanket, I don't have to worry about compressing the insulative material and losing insulation below me. So I'll just wrap up like this sometimes and sleep. And this has also got the added benefit of when I get up in the morning, I've already got my blanket on, right? So let's say you're down a little colder beyond a simple blanket or a patu, or you want to use the simple blanket, but you need a little um, a little insulation underneath. Let's talk about that. We have to go on the other side. Here's a couple things you can do. Let's pop over here with the camera. Another feature of this hammock, watch out for that hole when you come over here. Another feature of this hammock is it's got a double bottom. So it's got this slip pocket between the part I sleep in, say the thin hammock, it's got that second layer. This is great for if you bring along just a yoga mat or a, a thermo rest or just some sort of padding. That will give you insulation and now you can lay, so I can open this side up as well. Now I've got that little little pad to lay on that'll provide some insulation sometimes I'll pair that up with a piece of reflective blanket I can put that down under the pad lay that out help trap or radiate some of that body heat keep that from escaping I know these are called uh, space blankets but I wouldn't put too much hope in that retaining a lot of heat. It'll reflect some body heat, but it's not, um, it's not gonna keep you warm. You'll be warmer than if you didn't have that and the pad under there. But you see how those go in that slip? So that's a good way to get down to, for me, uh, low 50s, right? 50 is my cutoff when I'd start to hang what's called an underquilt or some actual insulation. And then in the winter or colder months, you can stack all of these things I'm gonna show you. All right, so let's take those back out and let's pop back over again. Okay, so we've got a couple of blankets and some pads, but it's a little colder than that. Maybe it's down to about 50 or below. All right, so let's say 30, so freezing up to 50, 30 to 50 Fahrenheit. You're going to want at least one layer of underquilt and then an actual uh, top quilt or something on the inside. So let me show you what an actual underquilt looks like, okay? And that's not it. All right, ignore that. Here it is. So this is an actual underquilt. It's basically uh, half of a sleeping bag. 
It's got some shock cord gathered at the end. I keep a little lightweight S beaner on there. And it's got some uh, shock cord gathered this end. It's basically a big puffy hammock. It, it doesn't necessarily support your weight, but these under quilts, and this has got a green, which is pleasant, and it's also got a gray in case I want to sleep a little more incognito. It's gathered at the end, and it's full of, uh, this one is from, oh man, Outdoor Vitals. Outdoor Vitals is filled with the Storm Loft Down. Uh, it's a zero degree long under quilt. I like this one. Uh, you can get the shorter versions, but this is how they work basically. Come over here and you find your carabiner or I just clip it to uh, the Dyneema uh, straps of my hammock at this end, the gathered end. You can grab both if you want. I don't find it necessary to get both. Then you run your quilt down here and I clip into the other end. Now I've got this one, obviously I've got this staged uh, already for my hammock, but it's just showing how, see how it's just sort of a basically a poofy, uh, a poofy hammock. Then I gather up my hammock and I put that inside of the other hammock. Now this one's a little, um, a little tight, so what I'll do is I'll loosen up these cords a little bit, the shock cords. You want your under quilt to hang a little bit, okay? So you want it to be, uh, to drop down like this. See how it sort of hangs below my hammock, the actual layer, there's about a foot there. So when I get in my hammock and my weight compresses the hammock down, I sink down into the under quilt, but it's still loose around me so I'm not crushing, uh, stretching that storm loft insulation flat and thus losing the insulative value. And then this has, uh, depending on your hammock, some hammocks have little um, clips that they can clip here and hold this up. Uh, I don't have an outdoor vitals hammock. I just have sort of a cheap uh, knockoff version. Not really a knockoff. This is a DD hammock, D, like does DD tarps as DD hammock. Uh, it's lasted fine for me. And then when I get in, okay, I get into my hammock. Now, from about 50 to 40 degrees, I just use the under quilt. And you can see that I'm not crushing the under quilt at all. I'm just, I'm not even touching it. I'm just hanging just below it so it nestles and provides um, a blanket under me, like half of a sleeping bag. I'm just suspended in it. They, they, they have some under quilts that actually make a tube and you pull them right up your hammock, but that interferes with the bug net. I don't prefer it. So once I'm in my under quilt, um, inside here, I'm not gonna have CBS cold butt syndrome. I, I have to have a way to stay warm on the inside. Personally, I would just still use the patu inside here down to about 40 degrees or sometimes nothing just not losing uh, heat through the bottom is enough to keep me warm however these typically pair with let me just call, close the other side real fast these typically pair with and what's called an over quilt okay an over quilt is this first thing i brought out still outdoor vitals you know it's the same thing it's basically <laughs> It's basically an open sleeping bag right? that's got a little foot box in the end. This is great for hammock sleeping. I'll show you why. Now you can use it on the ground too. It's got these little buckles. So if I were to maybe get somewhere and not find any trees available, I could tuck my sleeping pad down inside there and snap underneath and basically make a sleeping bag on the ground uh, with this thing. I'll show you about that later. So let's say I do have my hammock and these two green outdoor vital pieces is basically my setup uh, all the way through the winter. So I get to my hammock. This is what I do. I sit down. I usually have a ground cloth under me like that space blanket I showed you earlier to keep things dry. And this is what I do. I tuck my feet down into that foot box and pull it up so my little tootsies are in there. Can you see my tootsies? Right. And then I swing myself up into the hammock and then as I throw that down, but as I go, if the, uh, yeah, zip that down a little bit. I don't know if you can see me through here, but if the bug net is closed <clears throat> or once the bug net is closed, this thing, I mean, look at how much Look how much loft this thing basically fills 
the bug net and keeps the bug the bug net keeps the uh, blankets from spilling out so I don't drop them out of an open top hammock and then I can sleep pretty warm in here like that okay when I get too hot I can just throw that down when it's time to get up in the morning I can just pull my feet out and push push that under quilt down to the end so it doesn't fall out and I just sit up and I stretch I'm ready for the morning so that's a good uh, good pairing is the under quilt under quilt which is a necessity for hammock anything below 60 55 degrees depending on your how, how warm you sleep <clears throat> and then for the winter I use the matching heavy under quilt okay sometimes I'll just use instead of a patu if I don't want to bring the under quilt or I'll pair the under quilt in say January when it gets down sometimes 15 20 below <clears throat> I'll beef up that under quilt with those pads the sleeping pad in the slot and then I'll beef up the under quilt inside there with another insulated uh, insulated wooby blanket and then once that's stuffed down the end I get in I pull it the blankets fill that entire space I'm basically nestled into a big um, a big floofy uh, lofted insulation pile and it's pretty warm even my wife can sleep in that in the, the winter and she's notorious for being cold at night so I get in there use the blankets and the overquilt now let me show you some things you can do if you don't have an overquilt or some cheaper options okay or let me show you something before that deeper in the winter <clears throat> right you've always got your poncho with you always got your poncho with you you can take your poncho <clears throat> and gather the ends up here at this end let me just do a snap to show the the concept right so I can gather my my poncho at one end especially in really windy conditions and then I can bring my poncho down under my under quilt right and then I'll just use some string uh, to fasten this up now hanging your poncho below your under quilt will provide another a water barrier and a wind barrier so you're not losing any um, <clears throat> heat through convection even though your under quilt a good under quilt is going to have some water resistance and wind resistance but adding this layer of just a simple um, poncho <clears throat> hung below <clears throat> excuse me I'll have to edit that one out too using this poncho uh, hanging below that adds qu quite a layer of uh, insulation it was it was surprising how much warmer it was just hanging my tarp under or my poncho under there plus in a really driving rain I don't get my under quilt wet for the second or third night and I have to pack a wet under quilt you know because it loses the insulation as it gets wet but there's different ways you can gather your poncho up under there all right so let's say I don't have an under quilt yet like a a standard or um, made for this purpose under quilt I can make and I have done sometimes again just hanging my poncho under my hammock and that gives me enough of a dead air space that I can uh, stay a little warmer maybe it gets 10 degrees cooler I've used my poncho hung it below there and shoveled it full of dead leaves and pine uh, pine duff and other natural insulation grasses and I've stuffed that under there and made a, a pretty gross but uh, effective under quilt uh, one time we used a wool blanket under there and we stuffed it full of moss and then I piled because um, we didn't have any blankets just the hammocks and I piled um, duff and moss and leaves and grass in the hammock on top of uh, Logan and he slept like a six foot five gerbil uh, burrowed down into the the mossy stuff we could full, uh, pull off the forest and uh, he slept pretty good uh, he forgot his blankets and under quilt but that was okay we kept him alive with the, the poncho trick something I've done before is attach my you know in the interest of keeping this video short I'll just show you in theory I take my poncho liner my whoopee because this is what it's for and I put it on the inside of my poncho and you know how this works they've got the little strings in the corner you tuck them through the corner grommet 
and you just make a little slip knot so that your poncho liner actually lines your poncho, right? So basically what you've done is made an insulated uh, blanket of sorts. And I can show, I'll make another video, a whole video about uh, ponchos and poncho liner use uh, for sleeping. Because I've used that also as a blanket. But this sometimes, so I've, I've tied my, I've tied my wooby to my poncho. So now I've got a small layer of insulation with a waterproof outer layer. And tying this up and around to hang under, it makes an improvised, maybe a, um, a uh, moderate weather under quilt. So you can use double purpose. Uh, you got your quilt with you anyway, or your wooby with you anyway, and your poncho liner. May as well use that there. A great piece of kit, which we've got another video on, is the Helicon Text Swagman roll. Because this thing is designed to be used as a poncho liner. You can uh, zip it up and close the foot box which I see my son did not do. <laughs> That's fine. Right. Let's unstretch that. So your Swagman roll, you can zip that up partially and make another one of those, uh, like a foot box. And now you've got a top quilt inside your hammock. If you had a second Swagman roll, uh, Kean had his staged, I think he was using it in his hammock. It's got these Elastic cords, you can gather the ends. Leaving it unzipped. And now you've made, oh, you know what, I'll clip it into this S beaner because I got nothing else right now. Then you can take your Swagman roll to the other end. doing okay so we gather up the other end come down here I'm just uh, staging this in the S beaners because I didn't bring um, another piece of equipment to tie it over obviously it'd be too high for this but you see how you can tuck that down right now your swagman roll becomes an under quilt you could just cinch the hood up or tuck that into the pocket so you're not losing any heat through that hole now your Swagman roll becomes a, a relatively thin, if you compare that to the loft of this Outdoor Vitals, right? Obviously this is going to be for winter. This would be just for some mildly inclement weather uh, usage or maybe fall or spring. You could also, uh, because the Swagman is a poncho liner, before you put that up as an underquilt, you could attach your Swagman roll to the inside of your poncho and then you've got that third layer, or that second layer of the poncho outside, the waterproofing on the poncho liner. And then on the inside of that, you could put the winter under quilt. I mean, there's really no reason uh, not to sleep in a hammock just because it's cold out. And you, if you are, um, give it a little forethought with the amount of gear and equipment you pack, you'll have a lot of redundancies. I'll wear my poncho during the day and then at night, I'll throw my underquilt on my hammock and my overquilt inside, top quilt inside. And then uh, after I've worn my, my Swagman roll, my poncho around camp during the day, staying warm and dry, when I take it off at night, I just quickly clip it underneath the outside of my uh, underquilt. Now I've got a second and third layer. And if I've put a sleeping pad inside my hammock from earlier, now I've got four layers of insulation underneath me that come up and envelop me, protecting me from water and rain. Uh, one note about that. I recommend when you have your poncho under there that a lot of people want to gather the poncho up, right? Just like the other uh, structures. But I leave the poncho hanging open. Doesn't lose much protection and allows a little bit of ventilation at the end so I don't get a lot of moisture accumulation inside the poncho. So leave the poncho hanging at the ends. Poncho liner you can gather up if you want with those quick bungee cords or if you've got a wooby tied inside your poncho. And it will make a very cozy night of sleep in the hammock. Couple other little things, real quick. 
Um, hammock, there's a lot of talk about sleeping on a diagonal. If you pitch it right, you should be okay sleeping uh, about as fairly as flat as you're gonna get. It won't be as flat as the ground or a bed. That's just the life in the hammock. But sleeping on a slight angle, instead of like a banana, if I put my feet here on this side and I push my shoulders slightly over to the other side, I can get a fairly flat lay. My biggest trick uh, has been two things. One, I pitch the foot end slightly higher than the head end because there's nothing worse than sliding down in your hammock all night into the middle. If the foot ends up a little bit higher, it keeps me relatively flat and high up in my hammock. I sleep on my side. I, I don't get out of my hammock to use the bathroom at night. I'll do a separate video on that. And um, that's pretty convenient. And uh, besides having the foot end a little higher, I like to roll up a blanket or bring a small inflatable pillow if you're being super bougie and luxury, luxurious and put it under my knees. Something under your knees in a hammock is a lifesaver. Otherwise your leg is in hyperextension all night and your knee, the back of the stretches and aches because the hammock goes uphill. With a little bit of a pillow, my knee gets a more natural uh, slight flexion in it and I can sleep super comfortable. All right. In the last video I did, I talked about uh, prepping your hammock and I forgot to mention drip lines. So let's go over here for a quick second. As the rain comes down outside of my hammock, which it's about to, and runs down, you can get your hammock and your gear wet. So uh, pitching your tarp diagonal and covering, uh, having the proper size tarp for your hammock is first. But secondly, as the water runs down the tree, sometimes putting a, um, a stick or a stake upright behind that allows that little gap so the water doesn't run onto your straps. Some of it will. It's gonna run down the strap. When it hits this carabiner, the water has a hard time coming over the carabiner and further down your strap. The snake skin that I keep my hammock in also provides a water barrier. This thing will get soaked, but it dries quickly, keeps the water from getting to my hammock. The traditional way is to add uh, what's called uh, a drip line. And that's super easy. You just take a little piece of string with a knot on the end and you just make a little cow, little cow hitch or girth hitch as some people call it sometimes. And I put that right around there. Now as the water runs down, especially on this whoopee sling, it'll run down the whoopee sling. The water will hit this drip line and run down. Um, if it's really heavy downpour, I'll put a second drip line over here on this bit of gear, uh, this part of the gear line. A lot of times people leave their drip lines just attached to their hammocks, so yeah, another drip line. Plus the, um, the carabiner and say my tarp ends right here. The water's gonna run down but between the whoopee sling, the first drip line, the carabiner, the second drip line, the snakeskin, I'm gonna stay dry all night. Uh, and now it's raining, so I gotta pack up real quick. Uh, hit the like button. Uh, notification, share, subscribe, I'm trying to hurry wife. All right, that's it. <laughs>